nights on the south today. People have been evacuated, towns cut off and roads closed as heavy rain drenches the south. Alexandra hosts the country's first ice swimming contest, providing a chilly challenge. And Dunedin's historic former jail is lit up as it reopened as a visitor attraction. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Hannah Wilkins. Many roads are closed and warnings are in place across the south as the regions continue to feel the effects of wild weather. With rivers rising, a bridge has been washed out near Twizel and there's flooding on some stretches of highways and other roads. Lake Oho Village was cut off after the bridge into the township was washed away on Tuesday morning near State Highway 8 after persistent rain. The Waitaki District Council says civil defence have been in touch with the village this afternoon assessing infrastructure. Some properties in the area were evacuated overnight, including the top 10 holiday park in Ormarama, with Fire and Emergency New Zealand and police assisting. The owner of the holiday park says about 60 people were evacuated from the camp and transferred to other accommodation. State Highway 83 near Aviemore was blocked after a significant rockfall. Meanwhile, the Central Otago District Council has several road closures in force in the Mania Toto and is urging drivers to watch out for surface flooding. Near Ofa and the Ida Valley, the route between Galway Road and Fisher Lane was closed just after lunch due to flooding. Many other roads are closed around the south, including Omarama Takuro, the Lindis Pass, Haast Pass and Milford Road. And there's a watch in Southland. The Matauda River at Gore was this afternoon 2.3 metres above normal and rising at 50 millimetres an hour, slightly higher than the river level at Matauda, which was rising at 99 millimetres per hour. And in mid-Canterbury, the Hakateri or Ashburton River is running very high, with the council keeping an eye on the situation. Across the south, the south today. A man has died following a fire at a property in Palmerston on Sunday night. Police confirm a man was discovered inside the dwelling but couldn't be revived. Fire investigators were at the Coppenshire Street address on Monday following the fatal house fire. Fire and Emergency New Zealand staff pulled a man unconscious from the building on Sunday night after arriving at the scene shortly after 11pm. Police are working with fire investigators to determine the cause of the blaze. If you consider yourself a very hardy soul, there's a cool new sport you might want to consider. The first ever ice swimming championships have been held in Alexandra over the last three days. Competitors from across the country took the plunge into water less than five degrees in temperature. Go, 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 Sarah. Braving the almost freezing waters of the outdoor pool at Alexandra's Molyneux Park. The inaugural New Zealand National Ice Swimming Pool Championships saw swimmers over the last few days competing in races ranging from 100 metres to one kilometre in length. Organiser John O'Riddler says there were times in the afternoons that pool temperatures rose to just over five degrees, which is too warm by international ice swimming standards. It's actually got to be below five degrees for it to be considered uh, ice swimming. So at the beginning of the day it was fine. Uh, so we're hovering around that five degree mark at the minute, which, you know, if you can get 4.9, that's actually quite perfect. <laughs> The challenge attracted swimmers from as far afield as Auckland and Riddler hopes the success of this year's event will inspire more to take the plunge and try out the new sport. I first came across the sport about three years ago when I, I came across a video on YouTube and I watched these South Africans that were doing some swimming up in the Alpine lakes and I thought it was the craziest thing but you know the, the thought kind of stuck so I'd like for other people to see the same thing and then you know, we'll see you at future events. The Ice Swimming Championships final swims took place this morning. In Alexandra, the South today. Police have named the woman who died in an accident during last week's flooding of the Silver Stream in North Taiere. The woman died after her four-wheel drive vehicle was swept away while attempting to cross a ford at Silver Stream last Tuesday. Police have named the 29-year-old as Sarah Jane Shirley of Dunedin. A death notice in the Otago Daily Times remembers her as crazy, unique, loving, quirky, cherished and beautiful. Sarah Shirley's funeral is set to be held in Invercargill on Friday. Police have extended their sympathies to her loved ones and say an investigation is ongoing on behalf of the coroner. 
A shining example of Dunedin's heritage architecture has been freshly illuminated near the central city. Lights on the exterior of Dunedin's historic jail were turned on for the first time last night to celebrate progress in restoring the 125-year-old building. The Dunedin Prison Charitable Trust has spent more than $700,000 working on the second stage of renovations to the old jail. Work included replacing the slate roof and seismic strengthening. The Trust's also built two replica gate pillars at the front of the jail and added exterior lights. Another major refurbishment still to come will feature a glass roof over the prison's indoor courtyard. FI Yarkane, still to come on the South today. Incentives to get this year's Alexandra Blossom Festival blooming again. And we wrap up Southland's rugby season as Edendale and Wyndham go head to head in finals footy. All new episodes of Put Some Colour in Your Life are now screening on Channel 39. Take a look at Australian artists and the techniques they use in their studio. Put some colour in your life. Tuesdays, 7.30. Being a big softy takes training. Oh, I've gone to great lengths to be super soft while still being strong and reliable. So I'm soft on you and soft on the environment. Cotton Softs, proud sponsor of Bowel Cancer New Zealand. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. Shall I make some scones? Tēnā welcome back. A group of young men and women from Gore are taking part in an outdoor instructor's course with a difference. The course, run by Camp Columba, combines lessons in rock climbing with Christian leadership. Suiting up for a rock climbing session, camp instructor Willie Ranstead at Camp Columba near Pukarau in Southland is teaching young adults on how to give rock climbing instruction to children. The course is designed for people who've completed their last year of high school and aims to equip them with skills in outdoor education. They're doing a bit of a mock um, instructing session with a few of the kids we have here in Pukara. Some of the families have uh, let us borrow their kids for the, uh, for the morning to do a bit of a mock um, this is how you rock climb kind of session. The five week course is being trialled this year for the first time. It's run by Camp Columba, which says it has a mission to demonstrate God's love to everyone who comes to camp each year. The course also includes lessons in studying pastoral ministry, helping the young adults to grow into the next generation of camp leaders. Since I've been going to it for so long, it's a chance for me to put back into camp. I think that's one thing that I've always wanted to do and this is sort of me 
achieving that part of my goal. Camp Columba is hoping to run the course next year on a larger scale. In Pukarau, the South today. Some incentives are on offer to try and encourage entries in this year's Alexandra Blossom Festival. The festival committee will give $750 to clubs, schools and kindergartens who enter a float in the parade. Private businesses will also be able to access the funding, which will go to a charity they nominate. The new incentives are a way of thanking and supporting the local business community. There will also be prizes on offer, including $1,000 for the Best Floral Float, $2,000 for the People's Choice Award and $1,500 for the Best School Float. Southland's rugby season came to a close at the weekend, with the Edendale Magpies fending off the Division 1 team from Wyndham. With the pride of Southland rugby on the line, both teams put in their all. The tough competition saw the match tied at the end of a very full 80 minutes. That sent the game into extra time, with Edendale's Magpies getting to take the southern log of Wood home after beating Wyndham 35 points to 34. Both teams could have won it at the end of the day. Um, yeah, every game we play them is just tit for tat, so can't give them an inch because they take a mile. So now we'll, we'll enjoy this over the next few days. And yeah, just awesome. Proud of the boys. Proud of the boys. He reckons self belief is what got the team through 100 minutes of closely fought finals footy to claim the Axe Soper Shield. It took two 10 minute periods of extra time to separate the teams. In extra time, Wyndham scored an unconverted try, while Edendale slotted in two penalties to nail a one-point advantage. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. People have been evacuated, towns cut off and roads closed as heavy rain drenches the South from Ashburton to Gore. Alexandra hosts the country's first ice swimming contest with competitors enjoying the chilly challenge. And Dunedin's historic former jail has been lit up with the site reopened as a visitor attraction after years of restoration work. And now a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT and we welcome the editor Barry Stewart. Kia ora Barry. Hello Hannah. Now what can we expect in your paper well, tomorrow? Well a bit of the same actually, wild weather drenching the south so we'll have some updates on that as mm -hmm. to uh, what's been happening in Waitaki Valley and Alexandra in particular. So. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, pretty uh, pretty messy up there. Absolutely. However, I have some good news for you. Yes, what is it, Barry? Um, well, it is in the fresh pages. We have some delightful recipes, particularly if you like pumpkins. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Could do pumpkin. Yeah. We're, we're, we're there. Okay. Um, <laughs> and 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 to contrast that, we have a selection of Thai favourites. So Lovely. Thai cooking, Thai cooking, and pumpkins. So um, brilliant. Look forward to that tomorrow. That's, that's something for you to uh, get you uh, for you, for the weekend. <laughs> yes. uh, and of course, the biggest talking point in New Zealand sport at the moment is the fate of All Black coach. Ian Foster. So we debate that issue today. Damned mm -hmm. if you do, damned if you don't. So um, uh, some more engagement on that and we'll see if we can come up with an answer. Although I Brilliant. doubt if we will. Well, anyway. We look forward to reading the journey of that conversation in Absolutely. your paper tomorrow. Okay. Barry, thank you. Thank you. And time now for a look at the weather. The South Today weather, proudly brought to you by Mallmap, the skin cancer detection specialists. Looking at the situation, it'll be cloudy and cold for the next few days with showers, especially about the coasts. Heading to the top of the South Island, wet and windy tomorrow through here with 14 degrees for Nelson and Greymouth, while the southwesterlies well and truly pick up in Christchurch with a high of 10 degrees. Travelling south, we'll get south to southwest winds and rain for South Canterbury and North Otago. Ashburton heads 4-9, while Timaru and Awamaru both get a high of 8 degrees. Westwards now to the central lakes, still showery with south easterlies through here, up to 7 degrees for Wanaka and Alexandra, with Queenstown getting a chilly high of 5 degrees. Heading further south, cloudy with south easterlies tomorrow. Expect highs of 7 degrees apiece in Valclutha, Gore and the Catlins. And down to Invercargill. 
Showers and fresh cold south easterlies in the deep south tonight and a low of 5. The showers clear tomorrow, leaving a cloudy and cool day with southerlies, a low of 5 and a high of 7. And by Thursday, the showers are back with more southerlies, clearing late in the day, down to 4 and up to 7 again. And for Dunedin, cloudy tonight with breezy southerlies and a few light showers, down to 7 degrees. Overcast and wet tomorrow with southeast winds, a low of 6 and a high of 8. And then Thursday's looking dry at first, before some showers late morning and cold gusty southwesterlies with heavy cloud, down to 5, with a high of 7 degrees. And that's the news this Tuesday. For the latest news and videos from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz. And you can follow Channel 39 on YouTube to catch our news bulletins on demand. We'll see you again tomorrow. Ka kite a popo. Public interest journalism funded through New Zealand On Air.